So question of the day, is it more expensive to fly your airplane or to just simply leave it parked in the hangar? And well, I mean, Avgas is expensive. So you'd think, hey, it's not costing me anything to just park it in the hangar. But what's happening when your airplane is just sitting there and how are we going to prevent it from rotting away? So we all know it's not good for your airplane to sit. What exactly happens when your aircraft sits and does not fly? Well, if it's in a hangar in a nice climate controlled environment, certainly not a whole lot, but in the right climate, this engine can go through some real changes in a pretty short period of time. Literally, you can start getting rust and corrosion on your crank, on your cam, on the internal parts of the engine within about two weeks. Now, that largely depends on the climate that you're in, but it doesn't have to be parked outside for that to happen. Inside of a hangar, it still absolutely can. What happened to this airplane, our Cherokee that we so lovingly flew around and started our YouTube videos with, well, this poor thing sat out on the ramp in Florida for a couple months, and all it took was a few months for some serious rust and corrosion to occur inside the engine, and that was the end of the engine. All of a sudden, it can be very easy to have an airplane sitting there that would cost more to make it airworthy than it would ever be worth, and essentially the airplane's totaled even though it never left the ground, even though it was just sitting in the hangar. Now, why are we talking about this? It's because we are crazy busy here at the Flight Mike Alpha Pilot Lodge, and between building a new hangar, building runways, converting airliners into houses, moving these airliners across the state of Alaska onto our property, doing all this stuff, well, we have not been flying nearly as much as we want to, nor have we been organizing the hangar nearly as much as we should be. So, with all that being said, eight airplanes sitting out here on the property, winter just around the corner, we have to be honest with ourselves that if these things sit and we don't fly them 50 plus hours a year, 100 hours a year, if they're going to be sitting for weeks at a time, months at a time, then that could be some real serious expense and it could actually be cheaper just to pay somebody to come in and fly them because we don't really have the time for it right now. However, that's also expensive. So what is a different solution? And what are we gonna do going through this winter to ensure that we don't just totally let our airplanes rot away? Well, a couple good ways to destroy your airplane if you're an aircraft owner or a flying club member would be to put it in the hangar and then plug it in, preheat it because you think you're gonna go flying and then you never do go flying. And that Tannis heater heats the oil or the, the oil pan heater heats the oil, takes the moisture out of the oil, lets it condensate on the case of the engine and then all that moisture inside that oil pan rises up, condensates on the case, and then drips back down all over your cam and crank and all the other parts, push rods, things like that, and makes them, well, rusty. And once it's rusty, yes, the rust will wear off when you fly it more, but that's metal that can't be replaced. The only way to replace it is to buy the new cam, buy the new crank, push rods, all that good stuff, and it's crazy expensive. You can be doing an engine overhaul on an engine that might have just a few hundred hours when you shouldn't be because you didn't fly it enough or because you left it plugged in when you shouldn't have. Now, do you say, okay, well, I'm just gonna not plug my airplane in this winter? Sure, it'd be best to just not plug the airplane in unless you absolutely know you're going to be flying it that day. And another great thing to do, another great way to destroy your engine would be the run-up guys. So we all know them, they hang out around the airport and they're generally in their 60s and 70s, no stereotyping here, but with the best of intentions, they wanna go fly, but they can't. Uh, medical issues, time, money, whatever it is, but they still own an airplane, they've got a hangar, and they pull out of the hangar once a month, once every couple weeks, and they run it up, just to get that oil and stuff moving around in that engine, and make a whole lot of moisture by burning fuel that stays inside that engine, because it doesn't get up to true operating temperature you've got to get the cylinders up to operating temperature. You got to get the oil up to over 200 degrees to get rid of that water. Otherwise, you're just creating that lovely little moist microclimate inside the engine, which creates a lot of rust corrosion and, well, money down the drain. So when you see these airplanes going for super cheap on Barnstormers and Facebook Marketplace, some of them out there just simply aren't worth $10 even because of how much it would cost to get them back up to speed because they were neglected. Now, back to what are we gonna do this winter to make sure our airplanes are not neglected. If I know for a fact I'm not going to fly an airplane for a year or more, that thing's just gonna get pickled, or basically I'm gonna fill the engine case full of oil, and it's gonna be cheaper to fill it full of oil and prevent any oxygen from reaching any of those metal components 
rather than leaving it alone. But with the best of intentions, a lot of us refuse to admit that we're not going to fly an airplane for a month or two or three, and we just think, hey, we're going to get to it and it's all going to be fine. So what's some other solutions? Well, the folks over at RPX sent us this thing to try out, and I am going to be giving it a try this winter. I'm pretty excited to try it out. It is aptly named a Drybot. So this is a little robot for your engine to dry it out. So you plug it in, you turn it on, you hook up this little hose right here, you put that over your oil cap, and whether you're on the ramp or hangered, this little guy is essentially an HVAC climate control unit for the inside of your engine. So it is going to regulate the humidity levels inside the case to prevent the internals of your engine from looking like this. Now, of course, you may be saying, well, hey, John, I really don't need another thing in my hangar, another airplane toy. Uh, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and fly my airplane or I'm going to go ahead and put it in a climate controlled hangar or it'll be fine. I live in Arizona, whatever it is. I live in Michigan. That's actually a terrible place in the winter for airplanes. Florida, California, all those moist, humid places are not good. And just because it's not visible, it's happening on the inside of the engine, doesn't mean it's not happening and costing you real money and taking hours off the life expectancy of your airplane. So if nothing else, please just be honest with yourself. How much are you really going to fly? Can you put some stopgap measures in place that are relatively cheap now to avoid big bills down the road, whether it be a dry bot or some other way to keep your engine dry or preserve the airframe and engine on your airplane? Things for the airframe like ACF 50, Corrosion X treatments, all that stuff's really great. For the engine, you can say, oh, there's these additives I'm going to put in the oil. Well, oil drips off stuff when it doesn't run. Oh, I'm going to run the engine. You're going to make a bunch of moisture. Oh, I fly pretty often. Well, yeah, but you do those super long descents and taxi ends where the temperatures come down and your engine's still running, making a lot of moisture that never gets cooked off of there. So although we like to let our engines cool down before shutting them down, we don't like to run them for 10 minutes out of 5,000 feet all the way down to the runway, long taxi end, nice and cool, cool oil temps, and then yeah, lots of moisture in there. We even had on our 170 that Lycoming O360A1A loved to run the oil temps, even with it all taped up in the winter, 150 degrees. That is not going to work for longevity of an engine. If you fly it every day, it might not be so bad, but if you let that thing sit for two weeks after flying it around in 150 degree oil temp, it's going to be a problem. Bottom line, if you're a flying club member, aircraft owner, prospective aircraft owner, Come up with a game plan of how you're actually going to manage the moisture content in your engine when you are not flying it to prevent it from looking like this one. Now, if you're interested at all in the Drybot or all the different ways that RPX has come up with to preserve your airframe and engine, click on the link in the description below. There's actually a $200 off coupon right now if you're interested in purchasing one of these things, or you can go ahead and hit them up on the phone. They can walk you through what products and stuff they offer to help you preserve your airplane and keep your maintenance bills down. If you're wondering why exactly it is that we need these devices to preserve our airplanes and what the heck it is we've been doing up here in Alaska and why we haven't been posting a ton of videos, it is because we've been crazy busy this summer getting the second runway done. It is now done and open 1,950 feet long, almost 2,000 feet long on the second runway. The DC-6 airplane house is complete and we've been busy flying with students, doing mountain flying, tailwheel flying, and that sort of stuff through this summer. This winter, we are super focused on getting the DC-9 airplane house up and running in addition to the DC-6 and starting construction on the air traffic control tower, as well as the Boeing 727 airplane house, because, you know, you can't have too many airplane houses around. You have one, you might as well have two, hey, maybe three. So for all of you watching this YouTube video right now, not flying your airplane, Turn off the YouTube, go put 0.5 on the Hobbs in, get that airplane up, get that engine up to operating temperature, and be honest with yourself about what you're going to be doing this winter and just on a regular ongoing basis, week after week, to preserve your airframe and engine to avoid those costly repair bills that will seriously kill your flying hours. As always, guys, if you cannot fly every day, fly at MikeAlpha.com, and super excited to share with you the updates for the DC-6 that is going to be open soon for our first guest, August 1st, 2023, at the Fly at Mike Alpha Pilot Lodge here in Big Lake, Alaska. Super excited for it. You'll be seeing it here on the YouTube very soon.